some viewers may find the following video disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Well, hello and welcome back to the channel, everybody. In today's video, uh, well, I'm going to compare and contrast the differing methods of the real press versus the fake press, otherwise known as the First Amendment Auditor Movement. And in this particular scenario, I'm going to be comparing what the actual journalists do versus what uh, Looney Lana tends to do. Now, two weeks ago, I ended up running across a story from Michigan where a, uh, where a resident of that state was having trouble with the post office and uh, just couldn't seem to get any uh, adequate help until the uh, press came along and revealed the story. And, uh, well, it's two weeks later, and they just posted a uh, conclusion to that story where the uh, post office ended up coming up with a solution to the problem. Now, throughout this video, I'm going to be jumping back and forth between Lana and the actual press, and we will see how the differing methods end up helping or hurting the people around them. So let's go ahead and sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. We begin tonight with that mail delivery truck driving over the easement, sidewalk, and property to deliver mail to residents in Waterford. Thank you so much for joining us tonight for 7 News Detroit at 6. I'm Carolyn Clifford. And I'm Mike Duffy. Okay, here's something that uh, the frauditors never do. They always talk about the what brought them there, some form of corruption or some problem that is going on. But all we ever see is the frauditors causing the problems. And they never show proof of this, these complaints that uh, brought them to this uh, location when they do their frauds. Now, on the flip side of the coin, we've got these members of the press from Michigan who are actually showing the problem. They're showing that this mail delivery truck is... Uh, running over people's lawns, running over the sidewalk, running over the public easement, uh, and everything like that. And it ends up destroying people's lawns as a result of that. So we have a problem that needs a solution, and the press in this instance is going to investigate and try to come up with a solution. Now on the flip side of the coin, what the frauditors do? They create the problem. We'll just show a quick example of how they create the problem. And then we'll be right back to this issue right here. Oh, Lana. Uh, the only one that's going to be telling lies here is you. And I'm glad you left this video intact. That way, people can come back, point and laugh at how much you did lie. Especially the uh, defendants in your case, because, well, yeah, I don't see that case going forward very well. In fact, they'll probably only be laughed right out of court. <laughs> Can you have the police meet me outside? That way you can kind of actually help these people, send her for a few of them. I'll be back in after I deal with the police. I'm assuming you guys called the police on me. Oh, we haven't. Would you like us to? But, uh, that's, she told me she did, so. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah if you want to yeah, have them meet outside, we'll yeah. Have, yeah. Yeah, that way course. you can help people and I'll Thank meet them outside. Three. You're welcome. I'll be right out here. I'll be right back. Okay, okay. In this particular situation, uh, Lana is trying to express the First Amendment right to be a complete pain in the ass and shut down this office because people are not allowed to have a little bit of privacy in public, especially when it comes to their personal information. 
And we've seen time and time again that Lana tends to infer that being a member of the press grants you special rights and privileges above everybody else. And uh, we all know that's not the case. The First Amendment, as far as freedom of the press goes, just means that you can publish your stories without government interference. And speaking of which, we will go back now to the uh, post office issue that this uh, member of the press, this actual member of the press, is investigating. So let's roll that beautiful bean footage, shall we? Take a look at this video sent to us by a homeowner who says this has been happening for years. He says that he asked the post office to stop and filed police reports, but he still can't get the mail truck to stay off his property. So we sent 7 News Detroit reporter Sarah Michaels to his house to help raise his voice over how much damage this has been causing and what can be done about it. Waterford homeowner Benny Hunt has placed these construction cones all along the easement in front of his property. He's also placed one right there on the edge of his property. So. Why is he doing this? He tells me that he has to do this in order to keep the mail delivery service from driving on top of his property. Now, uh, what would the solution be to this little problem right here? I mean, we've got an actual issue with the post office, an actual tangible issue with video evidence of a uh, wrongdoing. Now, what would the solution be? Call the post office and discuss it with them. But it didn't work out for this particular gentleman right here. And so he ended up contacting his local news station over this. So now this news station is going to get involved. And there is going to be a solution that comes out within a couple weeks. So I have a $500 estimate just for these repairs. Waterford homeowner Benny Hunt is fed up. I literally have the best lawn on the block. So it hurts when I see somebody drive through it. He tells me for years now, the U.S. Postal Service drivers in Waterford have been driving on the easement, the sidewalk, and on his property, just like this when delivering his mail. He says it's caused extensive damage over the years. This is a sprinkler that I water my lawn with. It was right here. They ran over three or four solar lights, destroyed them, four or five different American flags, destroyed them. When you tell them, hey, driving on my lawn right here messes up my personal property, what do they say to you? It's a safety hazard. Hunt tells me that he and his wife have complained and filed these multiple police reports, but the problem continues. So he tried moving his mailbox. So you took your mailbox from over there and you moved it towards the road, so yep. this wouldn't be a problem? Yep. And then what happened? They say it's a safety hazard for the carrier to deliver my mail. So they're not delivering your mail there they at all? They refuse to deliver my mail even though some neighbors have their mailboxes also on the side of the road. While we were talking, a mail delivery woman pulled up, drove past Hunt's house and onto his neighbor's easement and the sidewalk. I tried to ask her why she's doing this. Can you tell me what's going on? When she wouldn't tell me, I went to the Waterford Carrier Annex twice. They refused to talk to me. I just want to get this solved for him. I called 43 times yesterday. Not one answer. Eventually, the United States Postal Service gave me this statement. Person I came back to United Hunt's house Postal to tell him. Service. And they gave me this statement. And they said, the Postal Service will reach out to the customer to resolve any delivery issues. The Postal Service apologizes for the inconvenience this has caused the customer. What's your reaction to that? I still have no mail. This is what I'm dealing with. For five years, round and round and round we go. Call me next week if it's not resolved. Fair? I also reached out to the Waterford Police Department to ask if this is legal. They told me that generally driving on the sidewalk or private property is not permitted. Hunt tells me that he does plan to take the United States Postal Service to court for all his damages. In Waterford, Sarah Michaels, 7 News Detroit. And we know you will stay on top of it. Thank you, Sarah. Now, what would have Lana done with this particular situation had this thing been brought up? Who knows? Because all Lana ever does is well cause havoc everywhere that Lana goes. So let's give an example of what Lana would definitely be doing 
in this particular situation. So I'm assuming you're in charge. Yeah. So you're telling me under threat of arrest. I know, but I, so if I walk back in, I'll be arrested. Absolutely. Okay. So, so you, you do you do understand, and I, I'm not refusing to leave. I'm just having a conversation with you at this point. Okay. Okay. And that's the only reason I'm still at this location. Okay. But I'm telling you, that's open to the public, and now you just violated my rights. Okay. Okay. Have a nice day. Okay. Are you with the that's sheriff's department or Dade City Police? All right. Yep. You'll definitely hear from me. Thank okay. you. No problem. ID, your identification. Sure. Is it is it required by law? Yes, it is. Okay. And so if I don't give it to you, then what? Then we can place you under arrest. So you can see that there's multiple violations here done by the Dade City Police, specifically Sergeant Shireman and Captain Rowe. You can see that Lisa McGuire, the Pasco County Tax Collector's Office, she is the one who trespassed me. So what would Lana do in this particular kind of situation? Well, Lana would be more likely to uh, go into a government building where there's lots of sensitive information and find themselves getting trespassed from the building and whine and cry and complain about their First Amendment rights being violated because they're members of the press and everything like that. Oh, boy, yeah, yeah, we've seen that plenty of times from Lana. Now, let's go to the actual press and see what happened with this story two weeks after the fact. So let's roll that beautiful bean footage, shall we? But we begin tonight with our report getting results less than two weeks after a mail carrier was caught on camera driving on a resident's lawn in Waterford. Thank you so much for joining us for 7 News Detroit at 6. I'm Carolyn Clifford. And I'm Mike Duffy. In less than two weeks, more than 1.3 million people have watched the story on YouTube alone. Thousands sharing their own shock. Now the homeowner, Benny Hunt, is telling our team his problem has finally been solved. This afternoon, Hunt opened up to 7 News Detroit reporter Sarah Michael sharing why the Postal Service told him this problem started and what's being done since we raised his voice. How are you? I'm cloud long. Less than two weeks since Benny Hunt first showed me this. That is, Waterford mail delivery driver has been driving on the sidewalk and on his property for five years. I'm tired of him driving through my lawn. His problem has finally been solved. You made police reports, though. You yes. said that you were trying for years to get this resolved. Yes. Why did they say just now they're able to do this for you? Because it just now hit their desk. The deputy general postmaster, it didn't even make it to her desk. She saw it on the news. Oh, so there was actual corruption going on within this particular post office. Some actual factual corruption going on within this particular uh, post office. Is it nepotism? Is it cronyism? Who knows at this point? But what would Lana have done with this information? Well, let's see. So in the United States District Court, Middle District of Florida, I have filed a federal lawsuit citing 42 U.S.C. 1983. And that is uh, under color of law right there. Color of law being civil rights. So basically you are still claiming that your civil rights were violated when clearly you don't know what the hell your civil rights are to begin with. You don't know the difference between civil liberties and civil rights and so therefore you're suing under something that is not related to your situation whatsoever uh so yeah uh i'm sure you're gonna go pro se with this because you didn't find any lawyer that could help you out with this because it's total bullshit to begin with i'm sure that's why you haven't mentioned a lawyer or will never mention a lawyer because they know better than this? There are four separate claims. Claim one is a First Amendment claim. All three defendants did unlawfully trespass me from a publicly accessible area of a public building without any indication that I had broken any laws or had obstructed or impeded any business. Wow, you actually put that on there? Uh, let me ask you something, uh, Lana. Uh, you do realize you can get trespassed without committing a crime in the state of Florida. In fact, that goes to say with any state in the union, I mean, if you actually put this in your federal lawsuit, uh, well, uh, yeah, I'm afraid it's not going to go very far. 
Claim two is a First Amendment retaliation claim. All three defendants retaliated against me for exercising my First Amendment right to free press. I was exercising my right to record my government officials in the course of their duties, and because they did not like me doing so, they conspired to violate my rights by trespassing me. Yeah, Donna, uh, yeah, this can go down the toilet just like everything else in your, uh, LOL lawsuit because, well, this... Right here just shows you have no idea about the Florida's two-party consent laws either. I mean, the, you were in a, in a non-public forum filming in an area with a lot of sensitive information. They showed you their policy as a result. They asked you to leave, and they trespassed you. This is all your own damn fault, you ninny. Claim 3, a Fourth Amendment violation. Defendants Shireman and Rowe violated my Fourth Amendment right to be free from unreasonable searches by threatening me with arrest in order to unlawfully get my ID for a trespass warning. Well, Lana, that goes without saying. You have to prove in a court of law that the uh, trespass itself was unlawful. You have to prove that getting uh, your ID was unlawful. You have to prove all that in a court. And so far, I've torn apart, I'm not even a lawyer, and I've torn apart uh, so much of your uh, bullshit right here. I, I can only imagine what an actual lawyer would do to this. Claim 4. 14th due process violation. All three defendants violated my due process by taking my liberty interest in public property without providing a deprivation hearing or any kind of appeal process. Wow, Lana. You actually put that on there as well? I mean, they don't hold court in the streets. They do that in an actual structure building where they have a formal setting where all this can be laid out. They didn't violate your due process. This was your first step in the due process. I mean, even a child can figure this out, Lana. I mean, good freaking grief. You expect this to be, well, not laughed out of court or anything like that? Oh my God, Lana. You have to be one of the most incompetent people out on YouTube that I've ever seen. But you know what? I look forward to this being put through the courts and seeing what happens. I really don't think that much of anything will come of this. So you know what, Lana? Yeah, you may have filed a federal lawsuit, but nothing will come of that. I can guarantee you that because this is a pile of crap. It was a pile of crap lawsuit when I first made this video, and it's still a pile of crap while making this particular video right here. I mean, come on now, Lana. You gotta do a lot better than that. So basically, Lana files frivolous lawsuits uh, based on a bunch of BS claims rather than going out and finding the real problems like these journalists actually did and help try to solve them instead of becoming a nuisance. So yeah, that's what First Amendment auditing get you. This crap from a bunch of criminals while the real journalists out are out there doing the real work. After seeing his story, Benny tells me Friday the deputy general postmaster and the postmaster came to his house to talk to him. He says they were shocked. They didn't know that I've been complaining and making police reports because their employees were just brushing it under the rug. She says that it's never supposed to been driven. They were taught wrong to begin with and they're following wrong direction. It's a, it's a complete safety hazard for a mail carrier to be driving down a public sidewalk. Benny tells me that the deputy general postmaster is now letting him choose where he wants his mailbox to be. He tells me that he's choosing right here and it will now be delivered as a walking route like this route is supposed to be. They now have to have a district training course to retrain these carriers. Because of this? Because of this. As far as all of the damage that was done to Benny's property? They ran over three or four solar lights, destroyed them. Four or five different American flags, destroyed them. Benny says that will be taken care of through a tort claim and... I'm not the only one. 
they had four other meetings with homeowners after they left my house Friday. That's right. Turns out this exact problem was happening to multiple homeowners in Waterford. The United States Postal Service gave me this statement saying, thank you for bringing this matter to our attention and we're pleased that this has been resolved. But wait a moment. You realize this means that you made a difference yes. for all those other homeowners. Yes. You got to feel good about that. I do. I, I absolutely feel amazing. The fact that just my voice took getting on the news, made everybody see that this is not okay. As you can see, Benny's lawn is looking better than ever. He tells me that this is how he unwinds, and he's just ecstatic to have this within his own control once again. In Waterford, Sarah Michaels, 7 News, Detroit. Wow, we say good job, Sarah, raising his voice, and good job, Benny, too, huh? And good job, local journalism. That's what it's all about. There you go. Oh, you got to love that final remark. Good job, local journalism. It could be construed as an insult to... Uh, all these frauditors at some level. So in conclusion, let's go over the key points. The frauditors tend to go into uh, uh, places that uh, they claim have complaints against them and go in there and stir up trouble. Instead of going in there undercover or anything like that to see what the actual situation is. Now, why aren't the frauditors who are supposed to be journalists uh, covering stuff like this? kind of thing because well to them that's not actual news to them uh journalism is not uh distributing uh valuable information or solving problems in the community or anything like that to them uh journalism is well chaos journalism is uh imposing your will above other people making sure that uh they stomp on the rights of everybody else who just happens in, to be in the area because, well, they it's a power trip with them. They want the power, and they don't want anybody else in the limelight. Now, as far as this uh, report goes, this was actual journalism right here. The journalists found a, a problem and attempted to help the uh, a citizen out with the solution, which the solution ended up being just getting the story out there, and then the proper people ended up seeing it and taking care of the problem, which was substantially less painful than a frauditor going into a post office or a government building and enforcing their will upon everybody else because they've got the camera. So at any rate, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching, and I will see you on the next one. This could be some groundbreaking stuff right here. You don't want to go to jail. For what? You read this. Yeah. I don't have to listen to read anything. It. Blah, 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 blah. I'm not listening. Gosh. I'm not. No, sexual oriented protection. Blah, 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 blah. You suck. They think they know it all. What's the Third Amendment, punk? Tell me the Third Amendment and I'll leave. What's the Third Amendment? What's the Third Amendment and I'll fing leave right now? What's the Third Amendment? Tell me. Third Most definitely. Because you don't understand why I'm here with a camera doesn't mean I have to get out of here. Doesn't mean I have to leave. Doesn't mean I have to go. <clears throat> that sort of thing. Well, this is what we're going to do. Um, we're going to have to enforce the, the CT and have you leave the property. Um, per the postmaster, per the lead. Uh, per the um, the uh, the person, the landlord of this uh, facility. Uh, so with that said, um, oh, I've got too many entities. I know. You gave me a warning to get off the property. I got off the property. I need your name, date of birth. No, sir. You're either going to provide or you're going to. I'm going to remain silent, sir. Okay. You want my name and date of birth? Put your hands right now. He chose poorly. Morning, Deputy Regan St. John's County Sheriff's Office. Two reasons I'm stopping you. One, Pine Island speed limit's 25. You're going 36. Okay. That's still 10 miles per hour over the posted speed limit. It's 25. No, it's not 25? So, I was going at 35. So, that's 10 over. You just told me that you're going 10 over the posted speed limit. It, 
Yes, you did. You said you're going 35, right? Yeah, but I said... That's a 25. 25. No, ma'am. It's it. The whole thing's 25. Okay. The other issue is your license plate cover is illegal. You can't have a tinted license plate cover over your license plate. Hi. How are you? Okay. I'm doing good. Well, you're detained right now. You're not free to leave, okay? Why? I've been calling after you. You know you're not to be on campus. No. Put the phone down. She yes. asked me to leave and I left. No, ma'am. So you, you guys... You are now under arrest. You guys are arresting me for nothing. No. You know you've been arrested for this before. Dumbass! You dumbass! You're a dumbass. Such a dumbass. You're an ass. Dude, so there's no way I can get in, bro? Come on, I'll put you on my YouTube. But shut up, Wesley. You gotta put signs up, ma'am, if it's... Are you Glenn Serio? Who's that? You know why you're kicking me out? Because you don't want what, someone watching a movie in the courthouse. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I know some of y'all are disappointed. I'm disappointed. Um, I hope that you will continue to watch this channel because this channel has brought more good than negativity.